हेलो स्टूडेंट्स होप यू आर डूइंग फाइन वेलकम बैक टू आवर चैनल टुडे आई हैव कम अप विद येट अनदर टॉपिक फ्रॉम द सेमी कंडक्टर फिजिक्स दिस टाइम इट इज़ अबाउट डायरेक्ट एंड इनडायरेक्ट बैंड गैप सेमी कंडक्टर इन दिस वीडियो वी विल आल्सो डिस्कस अबाउट द डिफरेंसेस एंड द यूटिलिटीज ऑफ द टू टाइप्स ऑफ डिवाइसेज सो लेट्स स्टार्ट द वीडियो A semiconductor material is represented by valence band and conduction band. There are regions of energy in between these two bands that are not allowed, and this region is known known as forbidden band gap, or simply the energy gap represented by E G in this diagram. The this diagram does not show exact uh, picture of energies. I mean, how the energies are uh, distributed in different quantum states in various bands. An EK diagram shows characteristics of a particular semiconductor material. It shows the relationship between the energy and momentum of available quantum mechanical states for electrons in the material. let us consider a basic ek a band diagram like this you can choose the x axis to be either momentum or the wave vector k because p is h cross k and along y axis we have chosen energy e in this diagram you can note a few things the band gap eg which is the difference in energy between the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band the diagram indicates how the actual electron states are equally spaced in k space which means that the density of states depends on the slope of this ek curve let us now understand a semiconductor energy bands in terms of ek diagram conduction band is above uh, this line and valence band is below this line we have the ek curve for the conduction band and this is the ek curve for the valence band e is represented along y axis and the wave number k is along x axis this line represents the bottom of the conduction band and this line represents the top of the valence band obviously eg represents the forbidden energy band gap a few whole states in blue color are indicated in the top of the valence band similarly a few electron states in green color are indicated on the bottom of the conduction band let us now understand what exactly is meant by a direct band gap semiconductor the band gap represents the minimum energy difference between the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band however the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band are not generally at the same value of the electron momentum or the wave number in a direct band gap semiconductor the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band occur at the same value of wave number k as indicated in the diagram example of direct band gap semiconductors are gallium arsenide and indium phosphide let us now talk about indirect band gap semiconductor in ibs the bottom of the conduction band does not lie exactly above the top of the valence band so they have different k values i mean delta k is not zero here 
एग्जाम्पल ऑफ आई बी एस आर सिलीकॉन जर्मेनियम एंड गैलियम फास्फाइट द फोटोन ऑफ एनर्जी ई जी वेर ई जी इज द बैंड गैप एनर्जी कैन प्रोड्यूस एन इलेक्ट्रॉन होल पेयर इन अ डायरेक्ट बैंड गैप सेमी कंडक्टर क्वाइट ईजीली बिकॉज द इलेक्ट्रॉन डज नॉट नीड टू बी गिवन एनी मोमेंटम हाउ वेर एंड इलेक्ट्रॉन मस्ट ऑल्सो अंडर गो ए सिग्निफिकेंट चेंज इन इट्स मोमेंटम फॉर अ फोटोन ऑफ इनर्जी ई जी टू प्रोड्यूस एन इलेक्ट्रॉन होल पेयर इन एन इनडायरेक्ट बैंड गैप सेमी कंडक्टर This is possible, but it requires such an electron to interact not only with the photon to gain energy, but also with a lattice vibration called a phonon in order to either gain or lose momentum. The indirect process proceeds at a much slower rate, as it requires three entities to interact in order to proceed. These entities are an electron, a photon, and a phonon. The same principle applies to recombination of electron and hole to produce photons. The recombination process is much more efficient for a direct band gap semiconductor than for an indirect band gap semiconductor where the process must be mediated by a phonon. This is how the EK diagram of a direct band gap semiconductor differ with that of indirect band gap semiconductor note down the involvement of a phonon in the ivs uh, diagram the involvement of three entities that is electron a photon and a phonon makes the process much slower let us now talk about the nature of the transition and the energy and momentum of phonon and photon in dbs photon assisted transition occurs photons are massless entities and carry very little momentum and this type of transition is essentially vertical in the ek diagram on the other hand in ibs phonon assisted transitions occur which are horizontal in nature the momentum of phonon is comparatively larger than that of photon the energy of phonon is comparatively smaller than that of photon both energy and momentum are conserved in direct band gap semiconductor but for indirect band gap semiconductors the energy is conserved but it cannot conserve momentum simultaneously as you need to change the k value for the transition in a direct band gap semiconductor a direct recombination takes place with the release of energy equal to the energy difference between the recombining particles in case of ivg semiconductor due to relative difference in the momentum first the momentum is conserved by release of energy and only after the both momenta align themselves a recombination occurs accompanied with the release of energy for the ready reference of the students the differences between direct band gap semiconductor and indirect band gap semiconductor are summarized in this table here the first difference talks about the alignment of top of the valence band and bottom of the conduction band second difference talks about the recombination of electron and hole the third points tells us which process is more uh, probable the fourth difference tells us that why dbg is preferred over ivg for making optical sources That's all for now see you in the next video till then it's goodbye from me and thanks for watching the video